Welcome everyone to Sugar, Salt, Fat, and Booze. Hit that subscribe button. I'll wait. Nah, I'm done waiting. Just hit the subscribe button, please. All right, so today we're making one of my favorite dishes of all time. But here's a question. What do me and Corporal Klinger over there have in common? Aside from the fact that we both look great in a dress. Can't figure it out? It's easy. We're both Lebanese. I'm half Lebanese on my mama's side. I'm also half Polish and half Irish, but that's not important right now. What do we make today? We made this. Kibbe. It's like a Lebanese meatloaf, and it's delicious. Kibbe is a very simple dish, few simple ingredients. Check it out. You'll love it. And if you don't love it, that's your problem. We're gonna start out in a medium frying pan, about two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Uh, to this, we're gonna add two large onions that we've sliced into, uh, eh, I guess about quarter inch slices. I had a nice fancy action shot of this, but I forgot to hit record, so this is what you get. Now we're gonna saute these in the pan. We're gonna caramelize them, get them nice and golden brown. That's gonna add so much flavor. We're gonna put these under the meat uh, and it's gonna just bring so much flavor to it. It's, it's amazing. Uh, growing up, we never did this. Uh, my family didn't do it with the onions on the bottom, but once I learned about it, it's the greatest thing. If they get dry, you can add a couple tablespoons of water. Just keep them moist. You wanna make sure you uh, deglaze that pan because that fond on the bottom is so much flavor you don't want to lose so keep it moist scrape it if you can you want to pick that up and bring it to the flavor now while this is going you should preheat your oven to 350 degrees and now that our onions are done we're going to put them off to the side let them cool down two cups of bulgur wheat you can find this in most health food stores mediterranean markets uh, we're going to use two cups of it, and we're going to add just enough water to cover. Uh, again, there's no measurement on the water. Just put enough to cover. We're going to wring out the excess later, but we just want to make sure it's moist. Give it a stir so everything's nice and moist. Now, while that's hydrating, let that hydrate for about 15 minutes while you're making your uh, meat mix. We're going to add two large onions to the food processor and we're gonna pulse that until it's fairly fine. We're gonna make it go a little further once we add our spices and meat. But our spice mix is uh, one tablespoon of, I'm sorry, one teaspoon of allspice, two tablespoons of mint, either fresh or dried. I prefer to use the dried, I think it tastes better. Uh, one tablespoon of kosher salt and one teaspoon of fresh, finely ground black pepper. Now we're gonna add our meat. You can use beef or lamb, but it needs to be lean. This is 93% lean ground beef, and it works perfectly. You don't want too much fat in there, it's just gonna be greasy. Now we're gonna process this until it's completely mixed. We want the spices dispersed through it. We want the onions as fine as possible and dispersed through it. Uh, that little bit that's riding up the top, I should have scraped down, but it'll get mixed in by hand once we add it to the bowl and add the wheat to the meat. So just let this go for a minute or so till it's completely homogenous. It may not look much now, but it's so delicious. So once we're done processing that, we're gonna transfer it over to a bowl. Make sure you get all of it in there. The allspice and the mint really make the meat dark. So now we're gonna take our wheat and we're gonna wring out any excess water. So take a big handful, give it a good squeeze, and then just gonna drop it into the meat. And we're gonna keep doing that back and forth till all our wheat has been wrung out and dropped into the meat bowl. There shouldn't be a whole lot of water, but you don't want too much going into the meat. So once all the wheat's in with the meat, now we mix. Use your hands, don't use a spoon. You really want to get in there and give it a give it a very thorough mixing. 
Usually with a meatloaf, you don't want to over mix so the meat gets tough. With this and everything you added, it's not gonna be an issue. Now that it's nice and homogenous, everything's dispersed throughout evenly, we can now transfer it into our baking dish. I'm using a, about an 18 inch nonstick cake pan. Uh, since it's nonstick, I didn't have to add any extra oil. You don't wanna add too much oil again because you don't want it to be greasy. Between the nonstick and the oil that's in the onions, it'll be fine. We're gonna spread these out nice and even on the bottom of this cake pan. Hey, by the way, did I tell you I'm giving away $100 for hitting 1,000 subscribers? So if you're not subscribed, subscribe. So now you're gonna take about a baseball size uh, ball of meat and you're gonna press it into the pan. And we're gonna do this until all the meat is used up. We're gonna try and fill as many gaps as we can, but we wanna get it even and without uh, any ripped seams. So use any little bits to fill those holes. Even disbursement is the key. So we want to press down so it's even. We don't want any high spots. We don't want any low spots. The very center, we're going to make a well in in a little bit to put some oil. So we'll deal with that in a minute. But for right now, just press it in. Make it even. Try and take care of those seams. The very edges, the outside edges, you want to make sure that those are pressed down and there's no spots like riding up the side. Are they going to get a little too crispy? So just kind of push it down with your fingertips and then press down to make it even. Nice and even. Even raw, it smells so good. That mint is just such a, an, an interesting scent and it's gonna taste so good. So once we have our meat uh, evenly dispersed, we're gonna cut it before we make that well. So since I'm using a nonstick, I'm gonna use this plastic knife, which is perfect. It doesn't ruin the knife, it doesn't ruin the pan. There's no right or wrong way to cut this. Um, you can cut it into slices like pizza. You can cut it into squares. You can cut it into any geometric shape that makes you happy. We're gonna go with some triangles and trapezoids. So I make the uh, cuts at 90 degrees, and then we'll go vertically or horizontally, depending on your orientation. Do that. Make sure you cut down to the onions, otherwise when you pick up each piece, the onions are gonna come out and pull out from underneath the next one. So you wanna make sure you cut those onions as you go as, mu as best you can. Get some diagonals. Then we'll make that well in the center. We're gonna fill that with extra virgin olive oil. Make sure that there's no ridges because this, when this cooks, you want it to be even and golden brown. So fill that well with some uh, extra virgin olive oil. And then we're gonna drizzle around the top and I'm gonna use my finger to control the flow. This way it doesn't drown out in olive oil. You wanna give it a nice drizzle. That's gonna help it brown. And to that oven that we had preheated at 350 degrees, we put it in for about 15 minutes. And once our 15 minutes is up, we're gonna rotate 180 degrees. This way it gets a nice even browning if you have any hot spots. After that 15 minutes, should be nice and golden brown. You can leave it in a little bit longer if it needs. This stuff is so good. So good, in fact, Raj couldn't wait he stole some, <laughs> he's laughing. He stole some before I could take pictures and all that stuff, but mm. it's so good. And the onions, mm -hmm. that my friends is good eating. And as I'm sitting here talking, he just grabbed another piece out of the, out of the plate. Make this recipe. You'll love it. Mm-hmm. Just so good. The mint, the allspice, the onions. Oh, the onions. So delicious. Make this recipe. Let me know how you did. If you have any suggestions of something you want to see me cook, drop it down in the, uh, the comments down there. If you hate this video, put it in the comments. If you love this video, put it in the comments. What are you waiting for? Subscribe. We'll catch you next time on Sugar, Salt, Fat, and Booze.